Hey guys, it's Poe back again with Let's Get Techie. Uh, today we're doing a highly requested video. Uh, I say highly, it was actually two people. Two people requested this video. Uh, but that shows you the kind of dedication that you are going to get from this channel. Uh, so today we are actually going to take a look at overclocking your AMD graphics cards. This is going to cover the Polaris architecture of their graphics cards. Uh, so we'll be looking at the RX 480 in this instance. Uh, this will apply for the RX 460 and RX 470 as well. The very first thing that we're going to do is, if you look down here in the bottom right hand corner of my screen, this little icon is labeled Radeon Settings. Uh, this is what we're going to use to overclock the video card. This is uh, something that we'll install with your graphics drivers. You do need to make sure that you have the box checked when you're installing your drivers, otherwise this will not be here. So we're going to double click that. We'll go to Gaming, Global Settings, and then Global Wattman. Now this is a warning message that's going to pop up. Uh, it's just telling you how you can completely destroy your graphics card if you don't know what you're doing. It, trust me guys, it, it would be very hard to, to mess your graphics card up to a point where it just died. So you can read that if you want to. I'm not into that kind of thing. We're going to skip right past that, hit accept, and then this is the main screen that you're going to use to overclock your graphics card. So this has got quite a few different settings. So um, you can change the frequency. Uh, you can mess with the voltage as well. Uh, here you'll see the memory speed. You can adjust that as well as the voltage for that. Uh, down here we've got temperature control as well as power limit uh, and then fan speed also. Uh, up here it is going to monitor everything. This is going to give you uh, things like your GPU speed, your memory speed, your temperature, your fan speed. Uh, so that's that's handy to have. That's something worthwhile to uh, to take a look at while you're overclocking your video card. Now that we're familiar with the software that we're going to be using, uh, we need to go ahead and take a baseline. Uh, so we want to know how the video card is performing before we overclock so we can compare how it's performing after we overclock and see what gains we might be getting. So the program that I use the most is Valley Benchmark. Uh, this is from a company called Unigen. This is available online for free. I will link it in the description. But the very first thing that we want to do is just a uh, preliminary run so that we can see where we're at. So we'll go ahead and run that benchmark. Uh, once you click run, it takes it a few seconds to load up. It will go straight into the loop uh, to do an actual benchmark you will need to press F9 once you press F9 it does go through the actual benchmark and it will give you your results it'll tell you how you scored it'll tell you your frames per second now that we're ready to begin overclocking uh, I usually start with uh, GPU core speed first and move on to memory second so we'll go to the bottom first and I usually max everything out that I can down here. Uh, that's just to get things stable initially and then we can start backing some stuff down as necessary uh, to get our temperatures in check and our uh, fan noise in check or where we would like for it to be. So the very first thing that I would do is turn off the automatic speed. I'm going to set my minimum to about 2300 we'll leave the target at 3000 we'll max out the acoustic limit right over here under temperature and power limit we're also going to go in manual mode on temperature we want our max temperature to be 90 because we want it to go as high as it needs to to hit the overclocks we do want our target temperature to be the lowest that it can be so that is going to ramp up those fans as necessary to try and keep this uh, video card cool. Uh, lastly we're going to max out the power limit. We'll go ahead and hit apply there. So we'll go right back up to the top now. The first thing that I do is max out my voltage. Now other people will disagree with that. Uh, I like to max out the voltage and then start backing it down uh, 
to to a level that I'm comfortable with to run 24 7 uh, so I believe the max that you can do is 1150 so I'm gonna go through every one of these boxes and change them to 1150 I apologize for my very loud mechanical keyboard I love this keyboard so you guys are just gonna have to deal with it okay so we've got all of our voltage maxed out now we can start playing with the frequency so the way that I do it is with this slider here and it will give you a percentage when you go up so if you look over here to the side as I'm moving it up this percentage number is going up so I usually start right around three percent so now that we've maxed out the voltage we've set a reasonable overclock it's it's not going to be anything spectacular performance wise but it's something that I'm comfortable in uh, in running and fairly certain that it's not going to crash right off the bat so once we have those set we're gonna go ahead and hit apply so now your video card is overclocked so we'll go right back into valley and do another run in valley alright now that we have run valley we will compare the overclock score to our original baseline score uh, and see what kind of gains we got uh, once we compare that we can go ahead and continue overclocking so right now we're at three percent I would go ahead and bump it up to four percent you have to hit apply up here in the top right corner after anything that you do in here so we'll go ahead and hit apply and then we will rerun valley again uh, so you're going to continue doing that uh, until it becomes unstable so once it's unstable uh, you will have a crash um, or some artifacting so you'll you'll know artifacting when you see it uh, it'll be uh, visual anomalies that will show up in the benchmark uh, like I said it's it's very obvious you'll know what it is when you see it um, so you can have that or you could have the driver just completely crash uh, that would come in the form of a freeze uh, and at that point you know that you have uh, overclocked it just a bit too far it's a little bit more than the card can handle uh, and you would go ahead and back that overclock back down at least a half a percent in frequency you may want to go ahead and bump it back down a full percent uh, and at that point we can go ahead since we've got our max overclock I've already went through here and lowered my voltages uh, so at that point you're going to start lowering voltages you'll rerun valley again see how low you can get your voltages while maintaining your max overclock the reason being is because every time we add voltage to the card we're also adding heat to the card so we want to use the least amount of voltage that we can while maintaining our overclock uh, so you'll get a good balance between that once you have finished with that we can go ahead and move to memory now memory is very very easy uh, it's essentially the same as the core so the very first thing we would do again is is change the voltage control to manual and you'll want to go ahead and max out the voltage uh, and then this also has a slider uh, this is similar to the core it looks a little bit different uh, but you're going to go ahead and crank up your memory now usually memory can overclock a little bit better than the core at least in my experience so for this particular card I would start it out at a 2200 megahertz uh, and then again go back to valley run valley make sure it's stable you can continue to rise this until it becomes unstable again you'll either see artifacting or you'll get a driver crash uh, and once you hit that max stable overclock then you can start to back down the voltage again now that you have finished the overclocking portion uh, we're gonna go back down here to the bottom where we set our extremes uh, and we can start to back those down so you can back your uh, minimum fan speed down you could also back down the target uh, this will cause the card to get hotter so you're looking for a balance between temperature and what you're okay with as far as the noise level of your fans uh, a lot of people game with headsets on I personally game with headsets on so it really doesn't bother me to have the fan speed higher uh, certain people do not care for that and if that is you 
then you are more than welcome to lower the fan speed a bit. Uh, you can also play around with the temperature, max and target. Uh, that will set extremes of what you're okay with as far as how hot the card can get. <clears throat> For me personally, I don't mind if it does get hot. Um, but I'm somebody who overclocks on a daily basis and that kind of stuff doesn't scare me. Um, if you're just getting into it and you're concerned about exposing your graphics card to high temperatures over a long period of time... I completely understand that and that's a valid argument so at that point you may want to back down this max temperature when you lower this max temperature uh, this will inevitably cause the card to throttle and that's not necessarily a bad thing that's just the way that the GPU preserves itself so you can put this wherever you're comfortable with um, I would say somewhere around 80 is something that would be safe uh, you definitely want the temperature to be lower than 80, but if you're concerned about putting too much heat into the card, I think 80 would be a good point to leave it at. Uh, now we are going to continue to have this power limit increased, um, just because that's going to feed the card the extra juice that it needs to uh, sustain the overclock. The last thing that you need to keep in mind when overclocking your video card is Yes, it might be stable in benchmarks uh, such as Valley, but you do need to go in and do your due diligence and make sure that the overclock is stable in game. Uh, I can tell you that if you're in the middle of gaming and your card crashes, um, there's not much that's more frustrating than having that happen. So it's definitely worthwhile to validate your overclocks uh, in game as well. Uh, that's that's well worth its time uh, and it'll pay off when you're in the middle of gaming and your card does not crash. The last thing that I will show you is uh, how to reset everything. Uh, so if you've got an overclock and you decide you don't want it anymore, it's incredibly simple. You literally go right up here in the right hand corner, click reset and yes and that will put the video card back to its factory settings. And that is going to wrap it up for this one guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope I was able to educate some people. Uh, I would definitely encourage you don't be afraid of overclocking your video card. It is incredibly hard to do something so bad that you're actually going to break the card. Uh, so enjoy it. Have fun don't let it be frustrating to you. Uh, sometimes it can be frustrating uh, trying to validate the overclock, uh, but personally it's something that I enjoy doing. Um, so that's going to do it guys. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Please leave us a like if you did. Uh, make sure you get subscribed if you're not already and check out our social media. Uh, and in our upcoming videos uh, we, we do have Ryzen coverage coming. Now Unfortunately, it did not pan out like I had hoped. Uh, we will not be covering the 1800X chip. Uh, we're actually going to cover the 1700, uh, which I'm pretty excited about because I think that that is more, uh, well, it's definitely more budget friendly. Uh, it's something that I think is going to pertain to more people. Uh, somebody who's thinking about jumping ship on Intel and heading over to AMD. Uh, so we'll be taking a look at the 1700. We're also going to take a look at the MSI Tomahawk B350 board. Uh, so that does allow for overclocking, but it's not the X370 chipset. Uh, so again, make sure you get subscribed. Stay tuned for that, and we'll see you in the next one.